Hey everybody, it's Roberto. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the best entry-level DSLR cameras that you can get from Nikon. In other videos, I will talk about Canon and I will talk about Sony, and I will talk about the non-major brands. So make sure you're subscribed so that you're getting those videos in the future. Let's jump right into the entry-level Nikon DSLR cameras. So I'm gonna talk primarily about uh, specific types of DSLR cameras from Nikon that you can use and why I would preference them as saying they're the best. So obviously the camera that I'm shooting on here is the Nikon D3200. It came out maybe about two years ago, but still a very good camera. It's super affordable. Um, they might be phasing it out soon. They have replaced it with the D3300, which has some advantages that I'm gonna go into. But the thing I really like about this camera is if you wanted to buy it new now with a kit lens, you could get it for about $450. If you decide to buy this camera body only, you can get it for about maybe $330. So it's still a great camera. Um, it shoots 24 megapixel uh, photography. If you're getting it for video, it can shoot 1080p at 24 and 30 frames per second. It can shoot 60p at uh, 720. So it's a great versatile all around first digital camera for you if you've never used a DSLR before. If you want something that's newer, uh, a bit more robust and can shoot uh, 1080p 60 frames uh, per second, then maybe you want the Nikon D3300 or possibly even the D5300, which has the flip out articulating screen. Uh, the prior one to that was the 5200. Uh, it also has the limitation of um, 720-60p, uh, whereas the new one has 1080-60p. So those are the major differences between the 5200, 3200, and their um, successors in the 3300 and 5300. I'll have links to all these cameras in the description below where you can get them from Amazon. So uh, just make sure that you're clicking on the description and checking out those links if you're interested in buying a new camera. The other different feature on the 3300 and the 5300 is the built-in Wi-Fi capability and the GPS. So if those are features that you're looking for, and you might be, you might wanna do um, wireless controls from your uh, phone or your tablet, then that might be a definite option that you wanna look into. What I will say about the uh, 3300 and the 3200 is that Nikon does not support uh, tethering for that to Adobe Lightroom uh, for whatever reason. Uh, I talked to someone um, at Adobe Customer Care about that, and it's actually something over on the Nikon side, not the Adobe Lightroom side. Nikon provides the um, you know materials or whatever for Adobe to be able to do the tethering for newer camera models, and they just chosen not to have those two entry-level cameras be part of that. However, the 5300, um, and I think maybe the 5200 are compatible tether-wise. If I'm wrong about that, please correct me in the comment section and I'll update it in the description. But the, uh, I believe that that's true. The best overall entry-level camera that I can recommend from Nikon is actually the D7100 or its predecessor, the D7000. But I prefer the 7100. And one of the reasons is if you're looking to shoot DSLR video, the D7100 has not only a microphone in jack, but it also has a headphone out jack. So that means that even if you have a shotgun microphone that doesn't have um, a headphone output for monitoring, that you can monitor the audio or whoever's shooting your video can monitor the audio and make sure that's crisp and clear and that everything's going smoothly, um, all without you needing a different accessory or to have um, you know, a split cable or anything like that. So I think that's a really great feature of the 7100. It's also um, an overall just better camera I believe it can shoot five frames per second stills, um, you know, 24 megapixels. So it's a tremendous overall camera. It does handle low light a lot better than the 5300 and the 3300. It costs a bit more and it does have dual SSD card slots. So what that means is that you can either shoot twice as much footage or video or that you can directly back up to another SD card and just have that extra layer of protection to know that you've got the work you need shot for that job. So that can be very helpful if you're doing um, any type of professional photography work and you still need to do it on entry level camera like you're shooting wedding gigs or you're shooting interviews. That can be extraordinarily helpful to you. So for all those reasons, I recommend those cameras. Uh, what I will say is that the, um, again, my preference is the 7100 and aside from that, maybe the D3300, even though I'm shooting on the 32 now, I still think for the features, the quality and the prices that those are very good. So the uh, 5300, depending on what deal you're getting, is about um, 799. 
I believe the 3300 is sitting about 599. Both of those are with kit lenses, if I'm not mistaken. The bodies are a little cheaper um, if you're getting body only. And I believe the 7100 is sitting at uh, about 1199 right now. And again, body only, I think it's at about a thousand bucks. So great deals. Again, I have links to that stuff in the description below, as well as the actual pricing for those. Uh, some accessories that I would recommend if you're getting into entry level DSLR um, shooting, whether it's photography or video, get yourself a, um, to start out with, you don't have to spend the thousands upon thousands of dollars. I know everyone's glass, 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 and they want you to get the high end stuff, the F2.8, blah, blah, blah eventually you go there if you're doing professional shooting if you're doing this as a hobby or you're starting to get into uh, somewhat professional shooting you're shooting corporate gigs wedding gigs then you can get by on kit lenses you can get by on the f 3.5 to 5.6 uh zoom for uh 55 i think it is no it's 50 to 200 you can get that i'll have a link in the description below that's going to be really good for weddings that's going to be really good for when you need to get things from further away I highly recommend shooting with a 35 millimeter prime. I talked about that in a whole nother video. Maybe you get a 50, maybe you get the nifty 50. Uh, if you're doing really high end portrait stuff and um, you still want an under thousand dollar investment, get an 85 millimeter prime lens. But all of those shoot at F 1.8. You can uh, ramp them up as you need, obviously to F2, F4, what have you, but they'll let you get great bokeh, great depth of field. If you're shooting video, they'll let you get that film look with shallow depth of field. So I highly recommend you get those. Again, links will be in the description below. And I think that that's a good kit for you overall to start into the entry level of DSLR video and photography. Well, I hope you guys found my recommendations helpful. Uh, again, this is just the Nikon entry level DSLRs because again, look at the time that I spent on just covering these. Um, I'm going to do a I love what Sony's doing as well, and I've actually tried out a few of those uh, cameras for my friends. So I'm definitely going to talk about that in a whole nother video. So make sure you're staying tuned for those and you're subscribed so you're getting everything. Make sure you're leaving me your comments and questions in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe. Check out the other great content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.